Hey Physio U community, I'm here with Clara and today we're going to be talking about heel pain, primarily plantar fasciitis for our mentoring minute. When we talk about heel pain, highly prevalent in runners, especially long distance runners and outside street runners is what research shows. Up to 15% of running injuries um, reported are heel pain, plantar fasciitis. When we talk about diagnostically, subjectively, it's pinpoint tenderness as well as first steps in the morning or after prolonged inactivity. So sitting in a chair for an hour, getting up, my first 10 to 12 steps are very painful. Eventually the pain gets better as you walk, but then the more time, prolonged standing, prolonged walking, pain tends to come back. Objectively, when we talk about diagnosing, there's five criteria. One was palpation to medial calcaneal tubercle, reproducing their symptoms. Number two was a positive windless test done supine or done in standing. Number three was performing an arch test. They performed the foot, the foot posture index as well as a longitudinal arch test looking at measurements of um, pronation, supination, see what type of arch a patient has. And then lastly, they looked at the tarsal tunnel, so the tibial nerve and patient, and having a negative tarsal tunnel test. So negative tunnel and negative straight leg raise. So for tibial nerve, you think dorsiflexion, eversion, pull, pull the cuff against, and then looking at straight leg raise and having negative for reproduction of symptoms. If the, you have that group, that kind of research shows that's indicative of plantar fasciitis. As far as risk factors for plantar fasciitis, what they found was a high BMI in the non-athletic group was a high risk factor. Lack or loss of dorsiflexion. So if we put the put the foot in open pack, 10 degrees of plantar flexion, stabilize the mortise, and then apply a posterior directed glide to the talus, so look at joint mobility, as well as flexing the knee to take out the calf musculature, and overpressing dorsiflexion, looking for end feel and available range. Okay. So lack of dorsiflexion was another risk factor. What's interesting is when they talked about the arch, some articles talked about having a pes cavus, or excessive supination, as a risk factor. Other articles found, especially in females, um, a lack of supination or excessive pronation as a risk factor. So the arch can go either way. If it's too supinated, we lose shock absorption. If it's too pronated, you think of elongating that tissue stress, we don't have enough muscle, uh, muscle support for that sling for that plantar fascia. When it comes to treatment for plantar fasciitis, there's a couple of different impairments we can try to tackle. One of them is improving dorsiflexion. Okay? Articles say that soft tissue to the calf, so gastroc soleus, had beneficial results. And then having the patient stretch their calf had beneficial results short term. Unfortunately, plantar fasciitis appears to be more of a chronic condition. Most cases last 12 to 13 months, as they also tend to have a fear avoidance factor to it. One of the high contributing factors to, um, to heel pain was the fear of going back to their running, is what research showed. So short term, more acute, we can work on soft tissue mobility improve stretching. Right? Um, we want to make sure they have good joint mobility. So again, mobilizing mobilizing that talocool joint in open pack, progressing to more end range dorsiflexion. Right? Sending the patient home with a nice dorsiflexion joint stretch. Right? They also talk about improving arch control would be the other impairment. So we can perform a quick reverse six to improve the arch. So placing the tape on the top of their foot, going lateral, wrapping around, covering that navicular. Okay. First cover roll, and then performing luco tape. Okay. If it's someone with severe pronation and it's more rear foot and midfoot, using more low die taping, where we have multiple different types of tape, um, research shows it was beneficial for patients for immediate pain relief. So again, pull that tape up medially, create a nice arch there. So we can improve joint mobility. We can improve arch control with tape. And then we want to perform some Therex to improve motor control and strengthening for arch. So primarily short foot exercises. So if the patient is unable to handle more of the firm tape, like the Luco tape, a more elastic tape can be used as well. Another great um, orthotic is a heel cup that research has shown to be for more of the acute pain patients 
just to help decrease pain immediately. Um, lastly, if the, if the taping is helpful, having them referred out for orthotics or even over-the-counter orthotics can be a nice way to help modulate pain while you work on strengthening and mobility. So in this position, we're going to work now on proper short foot exercises, so doming of the foot. So one of the common faults is as they try to make an arch, they end up lifting up their first ray, their big toe comes up, or, and we need to make sure this first ray stays plantar flex and stays down. All right, so I may show them a couple times that I want your, your, here, your rear foot to go more medial in the supination, your big toe to stay down, and create a nice arch in that muscle, in that part of your foot. Right? If they're having trouble keeping that down, a cue like a TheraBand can be placed there. So now, now they have to maintain pressure on there. And if they do it wrong, the TheraBand pops out. Right? So this is something they can do at home where they just hold the TheraBand in their hand while they work on creating that short foot, that proper arch. Right? Right. Another way that we can use the TheraBand is we can wrap it around their foot right, and pull it pull it immediately across their body right, and then that cues them to want to roll it out. Right? Again, making sure we keep this down. Now once they're able to maintain this position, you can hold that position, go ahead and do a mini squat. So load your dorsiflexion right, good, and stand back up. Again, do a mini squat while maintaining proper arch control. Again, in this stage of rehab, if we're working on motor control and arch strengthening, you need to perform multiple, multiple reps to try to encourage that motor control programming. All right, so we've talked about diagnosing plantar fasciitis, risk factors for plantar fasciitis, impairments to test for with, with uh, heel pain, and then lastly, uh, treatments for that. So improve mobility, improve arch control. Remember, we're ruling out nerve mobility, nerve entrapments, tarsal tunnel. That was part of their diagnostic criteria was to have negative uh, tarsal tunnel stuff. And then lastly, education the patients about kind of high BMI being a high risk factor, as well as fear avoidance. Encourage them to slowly go back to activities. Hope you guys enjoyed today's mentoring minute on plantar fasciitis heel pain, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care.